Welcome to another edition of Bucknell Women's Tennis Through the Decades. Tonight we have the decade of the 1980s. We've got a great group of alumni joining head coach Tammy Cicchini and one of our current student athletes, senior Kayla Koch. Kayla is from Weston, Connecticut, and we thank her for being on the call tonight. My name is Todd Newcomb, and I want to welcome you to our session. I want to thank Geisinger for being the sponsor for tonight's event. Geisinger has done a great job throughout the pandemic in the local and surrounding communities. And as always, they do a great job with our student athletes day in and day out. So thank you to Geisinger. Let's get right to it. I'm gonna introduce our guest and then I'm gonna turn it over to Coach Cicchini for the fun for tonight. So our first guest from the class of 1983 is Cindy. And I'm gonna use maiden names, folks. So if you're tuning in and you're a Bucknellian, you might recognize these folks better with their maiden name. So that's what we're gonna go with. From the class of 1983, Cindy Apple. She was a team captain during the 1982-83 season. She went 39 and 13 in doubles play, winning 75% of her matches, which ranks third all time. Overall, she was combined 67 and 44 for a winning percentage of 60.4%, which ranks 18th all time. Our next guest, also from the class of 1983, is Patty Koch. She was a team captain during the 81-82 season. She went 34 and nine in singles play, winning 79.1% of her matches, which ranks fourth all time at Bucknell. She was 28 and three in doubles play, winning an amazing 90.3% of those matches. If she had enough wins to qualify, she needed two more. She would have ranked first all time for the doubles winning percentage. Overall, she was combined 62 and 12, winning 83.8% .8 of her matches, which ranks second all time at Bucknell. Our next guest from the class of 1985 is Wendy Hipkins. She was the team captain during the 84 85 season. She went 24 and 14 in singles play and 28 13 and 2 in doubles competition. She won 64.6% .6 of all of her matches while she played for Bucknell. Our next guest from the class of 85 as well is Michelle Miller. She was 36 and 15 in singles play, ranking 31st on the all time singles win list. She was 37 and 13 in doubles competition, ranking fifth all time with a 72.9% win, win rate. She won 72.3% of all of her matches at Bucknell, which ranks sixth all time. Michelle won an ECC individual title at six singles in 1982. And she also won the East Coast Conference title at third doubles that year with partner Michelle Gutman. Our next guest, also from the class of 1985 is Kim Register. Kim specialized in doubles competition where she went 41, 15, and one during her bison career. She won 72.6% of her doubles matches to rank sixth all time on the bison list. She won the ECC title at third doubles with partner Gene Roberts in 1983. And our last guest rounding out the decade of the eighties is Lori French from the class of 1990. She was a team captain during the 89, 90 season and she won 18 singles matches and 22 doubles matches wearing the orange and blue. So coach, we've got a great group. I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, wow, those winning percentages are absolutely mind blowing. Those are great. Um, it's so nice to meet everyone. Thank you um, for spending some time with Kayla and I tonight. Um, Cindy, I'm gonna start with you. Um, love your sweater, love the V-neck. Can you tell us more? <laughs> <laughs> I know this is not technically a question on my sheet, but since we love your sweater, can you tell us a little bit more about what your uniforms were? Like, what did you pair that with? Was it a, a white skirt, shorts? You know, the thing that stands out to me, other than this, was <laughs> yes. I had these blue terry cloth warm ups. Okay. No lie. They were completely like 100% light blue, not, not even okay. Bucknell blue. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing that stands out to me. And then I think we wore whatever we wanted. I don't really uniforms. Okay. So sometimes um, we'll pair the orange bottoms with an orange top, which I love. So, you know, during October, they call themselves pumpkins or traffic cones or highlighter. So um, yeah, I love the orange and blue. I think it looks great. Okay, so back to my official questions. So before we start getting talking about um, your Bucknell memories, 
can you please tell us a little, a little bit about you right now? Like, where do you call home? An update on your family. Please tell us about your career. And lastly, since we are huge animal lovers on our team, I always have to ask the question about any pets that you may have. All right, sure. I live in Hatboro, which is a northern suburb of Philly. Okay. Um, and let's see, I'm married. I got married late in life at age 39. Um, my husband's rich and we have two kids and they're 19 and 17. So even though I'm, you know, we're doing college and retirement at the same time. Okay. So your son is 19. Is he a freshman in college or is he doing the recruiting or the, the college search right now? He actually um, is doing, he's a freelance video editor for social media, like gamers, influencers. So he is. Wow. Okay. So he is in the work school world. and he's absolutely loving it. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. Cool. So, so he's, he's doing that. And my daughter, right, is a junior. So okay. we're doing the college Right, you're starting the college process. Starting for her, right. So does she play tennis? She doesn't. She does not. <laughs> she sings. Oh, wonderful. Okay. How about and pets? We, we do have two dogs. And, oh. a fish. and a fish. And two rescue dogs that are maybe age nine and ten. Oh, wonderful. Very fun. Well, cool. That's nice. Um, Patty, how about you? What are you up to? Um, I also live in the Philadelphia area in Malvern, which is a yep. suburb, um, not real close to where Cindy is. Um, we moved here about five years ago. We lived in Somerset, Pennsylvania for about 25 years, which is a small town outside of Pittsburgh. Okay. And um, I am here with my husband, Keith, and we have two daughters, both um, married. We have three grandkids. Mm. Um, the newest one having been born just last November. Oh, wow. And um, do they live close by? We, thankfully, yes. They live okay. in Center City, Philly. Our daughter okay. that has the three children lives in Center City, Philly. Our other mm -hmm. daughter lives in Charlottesville, Virginia. Okay. Not too far away. Okay. And we, sadly, we had a family dog for, for years, but we're the classic example of the family where the kids go to college and the dog mm -hmm. dies. So oh, it no. all happened that August when Julie was going to go off to college. Um, we had a dog of 14 years and we really, we haven't, we haven't replaced her. She yeah. was a legend and. Um, oh, wow. Irreplaceable. Yeah, she's yes. going to be irreplaceable and we kind of like our freedom. So. Yeah, we lost a dog in April. So we got a puppy and you forget how much work they are. <laughs> so yeah. I should so, say I have a I have a grand dog now. That's oh. <laughs> John got a COVID puppy as a lot yes. of people did. Yes. So yes, we do have a grand dog down in Virginia. So that's going to be how I satisfy our my dog loving husband. He's crazy about dogs. About Can you please tell us a little bit about the uh, was, did you say that was embroidery that's behind <laughs> you? I don't know what it is. I am not a crafty person at all, but my roommate, Michelle Constantino, freshman roommate and sophomore roommate, mm -hmm. did this, I think it's needlepoint. I think it's needlepoint. Oh. And she gave this to me when we graduated. It's kind of like the one thing I've just kept. It hangs on a wall upstairs in our loft. And um, anyway, it's wonderful. So I'm going to tell her that I, that it's <laughs> actually, I'm going to tell her about this whole show, you know? Yes, absolutely. She, she can watch it and she can see her handiwork. And now if I've totally forgotten and someone else did it for me, which is possible, <laughs> I'm really in trouble. Oh, sounds good. Well, thank you. Um, hi, Lori. So you're up. <laughs> what are you up to? Um, well, I, um, I live in Mawa, New Jersey up in northern New Jersey. Mm -hmm. and my roommate at Bucknell uh, freshman year when she saw Mawa, she thought her roommate was from Hawaii. Uh, so she <laughs> was disappointed to learn that that was actually New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, 
But um, I have uh, three children. Um, the oldest uh, is a girl and she's um, out of college and working. Uh, the middle is a son who is also out of college and working. And then my youngest son is a freshman at Duke. Oh, wow, okay. He's been uh, you know, dealing with college and the pandemic. Uh, a whole yes. different situation, uh, which yeah. is kind of sad, but he's make, making the best of it. Mm -hmm. um, I am a, a CPA. I um, okay. work, um, for, you know, locally. So just about to, you know, starting to dive into tax season. <laughs> yes. Um, we uh, we never had any pets other than fish, um, but my my son, my middle son's senior year in college. <laughs> He rescued a dog and we have now become dog lovers and uh, her name is London and Aww. we love her to death and, and uh, she's become uh, the favorite member of the family. So. <laughs> it's a wonderful name. Now, speaking of roommates, when you came in as freshmen, did you room with another athlete or was it no. you kids or was it random? It no. was random. Yeah, it was random. I actually was in a triple in Vetter Hall. Um, while there were a couple other tennis players down the other end of the hall, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, there was no arrangement, at least in tennis anyways, to, to right. with another athlete. Okay. Sounds good. Right now we pair our incoming freshmen with golfers. So it works out really well. Kayla, oh, okay. one of Kayla's best friend was her roommate from freshman year. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. It seems to work out better with an athlete. So, yeah. 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 Well, thank you. Um, Kim, hi, you're hi. next. I guess I'm next. Um, <laughs> I live in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Cindy. I live, live where you grew up. Um, actually play pickleball on the courts that uh, you played uh, tennis on, probably. Um, I'm married to a fellow Bucknellian, Lisa DiBernardo, class of 86, softball mm -hmm. player. Um, I was in engineer, civil engineering for 30 years, uh, designing uh, residential subdivisions and um, some commercial stuff. And then seven years ago, my sister talked me into coming and working for her. She has a lacrosse business and I love it. So we uh, run tournaments, travel teams, um, clinics all up and down the East Coast. Wow. Something really different, you know, and I'm just really enjoying doing something else. Wow. Okay. Any pets? Uh, two Shelties, yes, they boss us around and pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so is that Bucknell blue in your room? Did you do that on purpose? <laughs> the pink? It's twilight blue, but we will call it Bucknell, Bucknell blue. Bucknell blue. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Michelle. You're next on my screen. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Here's my 35 year old sweatshirt. Oh, I, just, I love them. They're classics. <laughs> they never grow up. Yes, they never go out of style. Those are the best ones. I've moved a ton of times and I still found them. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, love one, it. One note before I start, I think Patty took a semester abroad and still had those amazing stats. So, <laughs> that though, makes it even more impressive. Yeah. That's great. And I think, well, I was trying to remember, I think we had navy blue Adidas sweats with orange stripes. Is that right, Kim and Wendy? I... Um, didn't we have those really bright orange vests that we had to wear? You remember that? Oh, yeah. We yeah, had the orange true. vest and we had the wrap around skirt, remember? Oh, yeah. This is like a button on the side and would wrap around and it was blue and I think it had orange and white piping, right? Yes. I think uh -huh. it was reversible. It was yes, orange. It was. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, like in the two years after Cindy and Patty left, we did get uniforms. Yeah, <laughs> we did. Yeah. And I can't believe it. Thirty-five years later, I'm wearing Adidas sweats again. I <laughs> that's amazing. You've been Adidas for for a long time. Yeah, we're still Adidas. <laughs> so that's great. All right, Michelle, what are you up to? Uh, well, I'm in Denver, Colorado. Uh, for oh 20, wow, for twenty-five years. Actually, Michelle Cunningham, Shelly Cunningham was, uh, we were, we had three Michelles on the, out of 12. Right. Shelly is here in Denver as well. And we are playing on the same USTA league teams. <laughs> so, wow. That's great. Uh, uh, my husband and I uh, design and build homes for a living. And so we have our own business. We work out of our home and subcontract everything. So we have raised two sons as well during the same time. And one is a rising junior at Pratt Institute, 
say rising, he's taking the gap, a gap year because of COVID. And the other one is a freshman at Cornell. Okay. Uh, six, six, does play tennis. <laughs> oh, he does play tennis? Uh, yeah, he, uh, yes, he had to choose between club tennis or uh, at Cornell or rocketry and he chose rocketry. So, but he does, he is a, a big tennis player. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, how did you, are you from Colorado originally or how did no, you make No, I'm that? actually a small town, South Texas, and then moved to New Jersey my senior year of high school. Okay. And then happened to drive past Corn Corn um, Bucknell at <laughs> And it was just so beautiful, fell in love with it. And yeah, I ended up there. So. Yeah. So how long have you been in Colorado? 25 years. Okay. Yes. A long beautiful. time. Any pets? Two cats. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> they may make their way across at some point. <laughs> I have two cats too. Yes. Love them. Thank you. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> so um, I live in Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, I have been a math teacher in um, the middle school in Darien for 35 years. It's just so unbelievable that 35 years has gone by. Mm -hmm. um, I used to be the youngster on the, on the staff and now I'm like the veteran. So it's like, <laughs> it just happened slowly. And then you're like, what just happened? Um, yeah. And for a little while, uh, Kayla, I coached tennis at Weston High School. Mm -hmm. um, which is so funny because I loved that. I loved coaching and I then coached in Darien as well. But initially, like I, I didn't get a coaching job in, in, in Darien. So I drew, drove to Weston and coached there. Mm. So that was really, really great. Um, yeah, is that where you went to high school? Where did you go to high school? I did go to Weston High School. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When did you, when did you coach? So I coached like, like in the late eighties. So you know, I mean, I, there's no way, you know, the people I coach, but like, I still kind of keep in touch with them. So it's so great. Like coaching is a wonderful, wonderful avenue after, after playing, I feel like you come at it with a whole different perspective mm -hmm. uh, after being a player, like being a coach about the things that really meant something to you and the things that were, that you hoped your coach would do. So mm -hmm. like, I loved, I absolutely loved coaching and I coached for a long time. Okay. Um, and then I got married and uh that had to go on the wayside and um i have three children uh, my oldest is a sophomore at lehigh um it hurt me just a little bit i did have to show him the bucknell lehigh basketball scores this past weekend where bucknell i said romped lehigh so that was really great mm -hmm. um, so, um, um, so, and let's see what else I, and I have a junior in high school and a freshman in high school. Okay. Um, and my junior really seems to like fuck now, but I'm trying hard not to push, right? Like if you push <laughs> too hard, then they go the other way, but she knows she doesn't want to go to Lehigh. So that's good. Okay. All right. That's she wants good. She to do her own little path. Right. <laughs> and, um, I have two dogs that I love equally as much as I love my children. They're oh. mini, la they're mini labradoodles and their names oh. are Bear, Bear and Piper. And oh, they're so much cute. fun. Yes. Oh, are you still playing tennis? I am. I still play tennis a lot. And I just, I just feel as if tennis has been like just this steady force in my life, my whole life. Yeah. And it's been just so wonderful. And like one other little random fact, and then I'll stop talking because I feel like I'm dominating. But I played in this, I played in this member guest tournament um, in Fairfield and I made it to the finals and I played against um, a girl from Bucknell, who was playing tennis on, at Bucknell. Like, and I was like, well, this is what Bucknell tennis looks like 30 years later, right? Like, oh my gosh. It was so funny. I wish I knew her name, but she I was, was saying, really she... good. She was really oh. good. This was like a couple years ago. Um, and I was so proud because we lost. Eight five in the t in an eighth game pro set, and the fact that I got five games off this girl was like amazing, right? <laughs> so it was really really fun. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Oh, that's yeah. great. All right, well, Wendy, since I'm on you, I'm gonna ask the next question to you. Okay. So recruiting is nonstop for me. I'm doing it all the time, and I'm always doing it. And I, as I tell my recruits, the ultimate goal is for them to be happy. Can you tell us 
how you made your way to Bucknell and why did you choose Bucknell? So, um, you know what, the, the main driving force was my father who did not go to Bucknell, but who had a boss that he revered and had two daughters who went to Bucknell. And it wasn't very scientific, but he was like, you're a lot like his daughters and they love Bucknell. Mm -hmm. And I think you should go out and look at the school. So I'm like, all right, I'll go out, right? And um, I immediately fell in love with it. And I applied early decision and I got in and then the rest was history. And um, it, like, it's always such a gift for me. I just, I'm, I've always been so happy that that was part of like, you know, where I went. And, mm -hmm. and the group of women I played tennis with was definitely a central part of that experience for sure. Now, how did you make it to the tennis team? So was there, so played, yeah, yes, so please. I played tennis, I played tennis in high school. There wasn't this huge recruiting thing, right? Did you guys get recruited? <laughs> like, we just kind of walked on. We're like, oh, we're, we like tennis. We'll go try out, right? Like it was very low key. And we were like this, I think there were nine of us in that class, right? Wasn't it just like Cindy and Patty and then all these freshmen? Like we had this enormous class. We made up like half the team, right? <laughs> and um, that's just where you went in. Like, and I was like, I, you know, I like tennis. And I remember Cindy playing like against Cindy in the warmups and like the tryouts and thinking like, what am I doing? I should not be here. Like, there is no way. I am like out of my league, right? But I don't know what happened. They took pity on me or something. I mean, I'm not sure what happened. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, Patty, how about you? How did you get make your way to Bucknell and the tennis team? Yeah, I, I had no thoughts of playing college tennis. I just figured, you know what, I played in high school. I was looking at colleges where that wouldn't have been possible. So, and then I was playing at a racket club in Pittsburgh and I was playing with a, a girl at the time, a woman named Louise King. And maybe she's been in was your seventies. Was, was she, she on last night? Oh, yeah, good. she was okay. last night. Okay. I was hoping, well, I was playing with Louise and she said, you know, you could play college tennis. And I'm like, I could play college tennis. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, you would love it at Bucknell. And I said, nah, I really want to go south. I want to be where it's warm. And, but she talked me into visiting Bucknell. And she said, you know, I, you definitely could play, you could play on the tennis team. And she was not going to be there. She was going to be graduating before I was a freshman. But mm -hmm. she told me about Diane and Donna Burns. I don't know if they were also. Yes, they were. Um, so they were seniors, I think, when we were freshmen, Cindy. Um, anyway, and so that, that's kind of how it happened. I ended up at Bucknell. And, and then it was the thing where you just walked out. You walked on for tennis. And the first mm -hmm. thing I think, this is my memory. The first thing I had to do was play Cindy in a challenge match. The yes, first, I, I remember that too. Up, we had to play a, a challenge match. And it was brutal and we didn't finish it the first day. And I'm thinking, I can't even beat the one person I, th that she put me out against, you know? And we just, it was like a war out there. We're playing this challenge match. We have to go back the next day. I'm thinking, there's no way. I think I call my parents. I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna make this team. Um, anyway, in the end, Cindy and I, I think were the two freshmen on that. Was there another freshman with us that year? I don't think so. And it was just kind of just ironic that we had to play each other right away. Mm -hmm. do you remember how many, do you remember how many players were on the team your freshman year? I have no idea. No. Okay. But I do remember the big class of freshmen, Wendy. I do like, I think, I was, think there were 12 because I was number 12. I think there was 12. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I think so. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I think all of us, none of us really thought we'd ever, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe we did. I didn't right. think I'd ever be playing college tennis. And yeah. I'm so glad I did. It was That's great. Awesome. Yeah. It's absolutely wonderful to be a student athlete. Yeah. So many advantages. Yeah. How about you, Cindy? How'd you make your way to Bucknell? Story to Patty. Um, Janice Huber, who was two years 
you know, late earlier than us. Um, she was from Lancaster and I, I knew her through playing tennis, but I, I called her up and she told me she liked Bucknell. And I, I did want to play tennis at college because I played in high school. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I knew that I'd have to try out, but I like Wendy, I played early decision and got accepted and didn't apply anywhere else. And that's great. That was it. Right. Do you remember your freshman dorm? Oh Wendy. yeah, Roberts, First West. Roberts. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm I'm assuming they were all separated. Like there was a girls' dorm and a boys' dorm and stuff like that, right? Are they co-ed? Oh, yes. Yes, there was. <laughs> yes. They were co-ed. Roberts was all girls, yeah. and then the two on the side were boys. What okay. were they? Tracks and crests. Tracks and crests. Right? Yeah. Yes. Great. Great. Um, Lori, how'd you make your way to Bucknell? Uh, well, um, my mother attended Bucknell, so um, that's how I, I, I knew of the school. And I think initially, my junior year, I was looking down south um, in the Virginia, North Carolina area. But um, mm -hmm. as it got time to application process, I think partly my, my current, my husband now went to Muhlenberg, was a year older than me. So that okay. played a little bit in my decision to maybe stay up uh, northeast a little bit. But right. um, I, you know, I did, I, I had visited the school um, because, you know, my mother had taken me there to see it on, on a couple of occasions and, and, you know, you can't help but fall in love with it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I liked, I liked the size. Um, I liked um, the, you know, the student body that I felt that I was going to be surrounded by and, and the great education that I was going to get. Um, and I, I can't remember whether I always intended on playing tennis in college. I was not recruited, but um, I do mm -hmm. Being on the house phone in my parents' bedroom, talking to Coach Rose, <laughs> just about what what tennis was like there, and, and so forth. And um, mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, um, you know, enjoyed talking to her. I loved I loved Coach. Um, and um, then, yeah, it was the same thing. I, I remember my, my parents dropped me off before anybody else had arrived, and we moved the stuff in the dorm. And I think I had to be down at the tryout within an hour. So they headed back home to New Jersey and, and uh, that was it. And, and I remember thinking, you know, probably being maybe a little more confident when I w arrived, but as the tryouts went along, I thought, oh my gosh, there, there's a chance that I might not be playing tennis at Buck now, but <laughs> I did end up, uh, yeah, I made, made the team and um, I was the only one in my class. I don't remember how many freshmen we started with, um, but by my senior year, I was the only senior. Wow. Okay. When's the last time you've been on campus? Uh, I took my, my son, who is now at, at the freshman at Duke, I took him to visit his uh, summer after his junior year. So I guess okay. um, that would have been, you know, two, two summers ago. Okay. Very hot day. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah. Everything looked great. I had, I had done Back um, early in my career, when I worked for Deloitte and Touche, I had done some uh, recruiting um, on campus. Oh, okay. And um, I, you know, I do remember visiting Coach at the time. She was still coaching at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and I did. I've been back for one reunion. Um, I think it was my tenth. Uh, okay. There was a long gap, and then you know, just this recent visit with with my son a couple of years ago. Yep. Campus is still absolutely beautiful. Oh my gosh! It, it <laughs> yeah. Really is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So. Michelle, how about you? Uh, well, main reason I came was for the academics for uh, the chemical engineering. And, yes. and it was a beautiful school and the location since my family had moved to New Jersey was close enough to, to make it to home. But it, uh, so the engineering was what, and I grew up in a small town in Texas, played tennis since, well, started on the asphalt courts at 12. And, uh, but I didn't know enough not to know that I couldn't play <laughs> in school. I didn't know anything about recruiting or anything like that. I just went and tried out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how was it juggling tennis and academics? Uh, from what I understand, I was one of only two engineers in, at the time in, at Bucknell that were even playing varsity sports. Okay. All right. So, but uh, 
tennis was probably my number. I, I was my, I enjoyed it more than anything. <laughs> so the good thing about engineering is all the tests and things are all open books. So you needed a good night's sleep to do well on your tests and you need a good night's sleep to do well in tennis. So that worked out. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good. But it, yeah, it definitely kept you busy. Good. Yeah. Kim, how about you? Oh, I was actually recruited to play basketball at Bucknell and blew out my knee. And back in the 80s, they didn't know how to fix ACLs. And I think I had four or five surgeries and showed up at school and it just, my knee just wouldn't hold up for basketball. And so I was able to find a brace that would hold it in. And um, I, I played <laughs> tennis in high school. So I tried out for the tennis team and um Rose saw that I was had a real good serve and I had really good hands at net. So she's like, I'm going to make you into a really good doubles player. And that's what she did. I could not play singles because I could not move very well at all. I still am even worse now. <laughs> but uh, thanks to Coach Rose, she uh, threw me in there at doubles and I played number one doubles junior and senior year. So, oh, <laughs> that's an interesting story. <laughs> the campus. I visited it and just fell in love with it. Applied right. early decision like everyone else and got in and never bothered flying anywhere. Wow, that's great. Did you ever get your knee fixed? Uh, no, by the time they had operations to fix ACLs, I was in my mid-30s and working and didn't want to take the time off. So now I'm like trying to put off a knee replacement. I'm you know, doing PRP and shots and, you know. Right. Oh, wow. The next couple of years, I'm going to have to get it replaced, but I'm putting it off for as long as possible. Right. Wow, that's great. So basketball, tennis, and do you play lacrosse? Did you used to play lacrosse I too? My sister was an All-American lacrosse player at Richmond. So okay. that's how I got into the lacrosse. I do all the math stuff, the tournament scheduling, and the QuickBooks accounting, um, Got it. Website uh, updates and design, that type of stuff. Okay. All no, right. no lacrosse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kayla, can you tell us about your recruiting experience and how you made it to Bucknell and of course. First of all, it's so nice to meet all of you guys. I'm so excited to be here. Um, yeah, so my recruiting process looked a little bit different than yours. Um, it was pretty smooth and easy, actually. Um, I met, so we had a former coach, her name was Coach Helt. And I attended the Lehigh recruiting camp um, about my sophomore year in high school. And so I met her and I visited the school and I thought the campus was absolutely beautiful. And, you know, I wanted to obviously get a great education and Bucknell offered that. And growing up in a small town in Connecticut, I knew I wanted that small campus and small atmosphere in the classroom. And, you know, I got that. So I was accepted and I'm so grateful that I made that decision because I met, have met so many amazing people along the way and my teammates are just my best friends. And so I'm just so grateful that I made the right decision. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my experience. Um, so I guess I'll go ahead and ask the next question. Um, Miss Cindy, what advice would you give me or any of the other players that are in our program today about the college tennis experience at Bucknell? I would say to enjoy some of the things you've been talking about, enjoy the relationships, enjoy the time off campus. That, that to me was the most memorable going yeah, to other schools and seeing other schools, but just fun in the van and at restaurants and spending the night and spring break trips. And those are the memorable things for me. So I don't remember any matches I won or lost, but I do remember being out to eat and laughing and those kind of things. So I would say take advantage of those and don't miss those. Yeah, we always talk about the van rides and how much fun they are going to and from practice. Even if you play so bad that day, you know that you come back on the van and it's so fun. Okay. Yeah. Do the kids still drive the van? <laughs> so when we played, the, the kids drove the van. Oh yeah, <laughs> I drove. That be my tip, don't yeah. drive the van. <laughs> okay. We did find that out last night. 
So they, that's all they could talk about was driving the van. And I had to ask, like, how did that even happen? No, so when you think about it now, it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Yeah, so no, they do not drive the van. <laughs> they had to take a course, I, I, I believe. I remember going. Right. Didn't you have waiting. like a special license or something yeah. to, be able to drive the van, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Patty, what about you? What advice would you give me? Uh, I would give you the same thing. I mean, just take advantage of just having a fantastic time. And I just feel like college can be a lot of pressure sometimes and playing a sport can just relieve that. So make sure that, make sure that playing the sport doesn't add to the pressure, but diffuses it. Um, and it really can um, if you have, if you just enjoy it. So that would be my I yeah, know. and um, we were very, we had a fantastic coach who really cared about us and got to know us. And I know you, you have a fantastic coach as well. And just, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, the amazing thing about Rose is we kept up with her for so, so very many years um, after that. That's just a cool thing. Yeah, thank you. Miss Wendy, what about you? I guess I'm going to reiterate what everyone else was saying. It's just, you know, I feel like college is so precious. Those four years go by so fast. And like, in some ways, it's hard to really appreciate what you're experiencing until you're out and looking back at it. But the camaraderie of, of being on a team, like, when do you ever get to experience that again? Like, you graduate and then you're kind of like off. I mean, you have, you know, I, I have opportunities, obviously, to work with all sorts of different um, people, but like just to have a common goal of like, you know, tennis is like, it's just so bonding, right? And so just to really appreciate it and recognize that it like, it is so finite and to make the most of it because the connections you make with people are pretty special. I agree. I can't even believe that it's been four years. It's truly, it's crazy how fast things go. Miss Michelle, what about you? Well, building on what Wendy said, because I've kept up with tennis as she has through the years, and it's been wonderful. And I've lived in a lot of places before Denver, I've lived in a lot of places. But I have, I would, you know, you bond with your teammates, but also get to know your opponents, because I have seen through tennis through the years and traveled a little bit for, you know, USTA and stuff, uh, or somebody coming through Denver or, or Boston. I've met, I've known a lot of people that I met in college or after. And so your tennis actually, hopefully it's just the beginning, the college and uh, tennis is. Cause I've been playing for 35 years and we went to 55 nationals a couple of years ago with 10 women in Arizona and stayed in a hotel. We, I mean, we played six, we didn't do well, but we had so much fun. But I saw people uh, from court from Colgate that, <laughs> and um, I know, I see every year when they come out skiing, I don't know if anybody knows Jim Benneke who graduated in 85 with us and played for the men's tennis team, played number one on the men's tennis team. I got to know his wife in Boston and then turns out she knew, was Jim's wife. <laughs> and so they come out here every year and I see them, but there are those connections. The tennis will provide the connections throughout your life if you, if you let it, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you for sharing. And Miss Lori, what about you? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't think of a whole lot else, you know, other than to, to what, what everybody else said. I, you know, I, I was trying to rack my brain about specific things that I remembered about, you know, I spent a lot of time on the tennis courts at Bucknell and in a lot of different places, but um, it's just more of a, a general recollection of, you know, really fun times. And, and so just really, you know, appreciating that. Um, I, you know, I also think of appreciating the fact that, you know, and, and being proud of yourself for what you're, you're doing at college, you know, juggling a, a sport um, as well as a, a rigorous academic schedule. And, you know, I remember there were days when, um, you know, I would four o'clock would roll around or three o'clock and my roommates would be sitting down to watch General Hospital and I'd have to, you know, get my practice gear on and go out. And, and there were, you know, days where I, probably would have preferred to stay home. But once I was out there and hitting the ball and, and you know, with, with my teammates and all, it, it just, um, it was just always a, a very good feeling. And you come home uh, afterwards with a, a little more 
uh, enthusiasm towards towards work. And um, you know, certainly I think um, it helped me to to budget my time. I know they always say that the, the busier you are, the are the better you are at, at uh, budgeting and making use of your time. So definitely I've learned a lot of time management skills. So <laughs> thank you for sharing that. And lastly, Ms. Kim. Um, one of the things I think playing competitive sports really helps you later on in life, um, learning how to work as a team, learning how to function under stress. Um, when I worked in engineering, we'd have deadlines that were crazy and it never just really bothered me that much because I was just used to pushing through and pushing towards a goal. So I think your uh, Bucknell tennis will help you later on. Um, and, I, and I've had bosses say to me, you don't get as flustered as everybody else because you're an athlete. And I think that that really will help you later in life. Yeah. So this is the fourth one we've done. And I'm so appreciative of these, especially for the student athletes that get to listen to everyone speak. I think the advice, um, Kayla, is just absolutely wonderful. Just, you know, finite your time here and to have fun and um, you're gonna make lifelong friendships. So yeah, all great advice. Thank you. Um, Kim, I'm gonna start with you okay. on this next one. <laughs> so this is a fun one. So when you got the email from Todd to participate in this call this evening to talk about your time on the tennis team, what are some of the memories that just came rushing back? Like, What were some of the, the ones that just stand out? Well, the, the first one that I remember is kind of like the worst one. And I was partners with Wendy and we were in the finals for the number one doubles for the league. <laughs> we were one point away from winning. I had an easy put away and I missed it. You remember you that still? <laughs> I remember that too, Kim. I remember it too. <laughs> and Wendy was so wonderful about the whole thing. She's totally supportive. Never said a bad word. And I totally <laughs> blew it. So, as Coach would have said, I had my undies in a bundle that day. <laughs> <laughs> so did you win the match, though? No, we ended up losing in three sets. Oh, no. <laughs> so we were one point away in two sets of winning number one doubles for the league. And yep. Oh. <laughs> It's funny that you still remember that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> um, how about you, Lori? Uh, well, yes, as I said before, I was I was struggling to come up with real specifics, but I, you know, I I do um you know, we we only did a, a spring break trip my freshman year. Oh, spring break trips, yes. We um, we didn't do one after that, but um, I remember that was a lot of fun and we ended up probably on the way home um, spending some time in Williamsburg, uh, Virginia, which was a really neat thing to do with the mm -hmm. team. Um, I, I remember the, I guess it was a, a, a tournament um, held, usually held at Lehigh, um, just was just a lot of fun. I remember there was, you know, indoor courts and outside. My parents were able to come watch and um, just kind of, you know, hanging out in between matches and all mm -hmm. a lot of, of fun there. And then as was mentioned earlier, you know, the bus rides, the stops at Wendy's, which Wendy's seemed to be a <laughs> choice. And, um, you know, fun times. My, my doubles partner, at least my, my junior and senior year, was a year below me. Mm -hmm. uh, she just was a, a lot of fun to play with and, and uh, didn't take the game too serious, which was kind of a nice thing. She just uh, knew how to have fun with it. And, um, you know, Coach, Coach Rose, I just I loved. She just was, uh, was a wonderful person and mm -hmm. still, uh, still get her Christmas card. <laughs> oh, great. Where did you go for spring break? Um, well, we went, we hit some schools down south. Um, I'm trying, you know, I don't even remember specifically. I just, I remember, okay. um, you know, on the way home being in, in Virginia and Virginia Beach. I guess it was, I don't know whether we went further than Virginia. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. How about uh, how about you, Cindy? What memories came rushing back? Me? Did you say you? Yes, you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, for some reason, the first memory that came rushing back was being at Colgate and going down. You know, after the match, going down into this super cool restaurant and getting a 
mile high ice cream pie that was literally that big. <laughs> so that <laughs> was, you know, how many of the years later? <laughs> spring, spring break trips, we went on one and I think we stayed in Coach's relative's house, like near a lake. I think it might have been the first. I that last yeah. night too. Yeah. She yeah. did that. Okay. So, and um, just how she, Coach, I, I struggled with a couple different <laughs> classes, but statistics was one. And she kept like, just behind the scenes, mm -hmm. kept track of what I was doing and just was encouraging and helped me with it. And I don't know if you remember that, I think it was Ario's Speed Wagon, the logical song. Actually, I think it was Logic too that I had a problem with. The logical song was Super Tramp, right? Oh, see? Brain. I yes. love that song. <laughs> Impressive. Mm -hmm. That would come on and she would, you know, make a reference to that and my logic class that I was having trouble with. And, and Wonderful. That was interesting. So who was your revival, your rival when you were playing? I think Lehigh. 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 Yeah. 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 Still Lehigh. Yeah. <laughs> Still Lehigh. How about you, Wendy? What are some of the memories? Well, I remember going to, to Towson. Do you guys remember that big tournament down in Towson? Like that was kind of like the spring break that we would go to. I don't think we went much farther than Maryland, right? Okay. Um, I remember um, Perkins, right? Like we, I, <laughs> Perkins must be a Philadelphia, like a Pennsylvania thing. Like I just... <laughs> like it was like oh my god we're going to Perkins for breakfast right I remember <laughs> that I remember coach expected us to be ready to play and like if the if the van left at eight o'clock she expected you to be there at eight o'clock mm -hmm. and there was times when she would be driving in front of the UC and there'd be people running behind the van <laughs> and we'd be spinning their hair their hair stop stop <laughs> we'd throw them into the van and off we'd go like then you wouldn't be late the second time right she was well, she wanted you there on time um and I guess I also remember like because um tennis was both a fall and a spring sport do you mm -hmm. guys remember playing tennis in the spring in the snow mm -hmm. it would snow like we would have practice it would be snowing and coach would be like out you go and we're like but it's snowing she's like <laughs> Okay. Well, I, I love it. But you know, weather, right? <laughs> and they were they were the courts like kind of tucked. I think they're gone now. They were kind of across from the UC. There were some mm -hmm. courts that were there or whatever. And I just remember this is the craziest thing I think I've ever done. I didn't think it was a winter sport, but like, <laughs> okay, like here we go, right? Oh, that's awesome. Kayla, she just set the standard. So if it's snowing, yeah. I'm gonna say I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy can do it you can do it <laughs> but I just remember the hotels and the and it was just so much fun to get off campus right yeah. and see different campuses and experience see different like how different schools do it it was just mm -hmm. amazing I right. was always so happy to leave and come back right okay. yeah, come so back. when you went to the hotels how many were per room I think there were four four, four. Oh, yeah four <laughs> yeah so a lot of bed sharing. First coach, oh. is it just two? Oh well, I squeeze three, but yeah, yeah. Someone has to share. So, okay. oh, that's great. Um, Adi, how about you? Yeah. So, I mean, I definitely have memories of the spring break trip when we went to Virginia. We went to Stanton, Virginia, and I don't know, Wendy and Michelle, was that that? I don't know if you guys were if if that was before you guys were on the team. But I remember staying, in that case, we were playing in a tournament, I think. Um, and we, Cindy and I have talked about this many times. Something funky happened to my eyes. We were doubles partners, which was awesome. And we, something weird happened to my eyes during this match where I don't know if they were got sunburned or I got, I, I don't know, but 
in, I just couldn't see anymore. And how awesome to have a partner, like we're at the back fence. I'm saying, Cindy, I really can't see anymore. So, you know, whatever you can do to, to try to win this match would be a good idea. It was, it was horrible. And I don't even, I think we probably did lose that. Um, but it was fun. I do remember being in the cabin, Rose's relative's cabin, and getting a whole roll of cookie dough and eating it. You know, all the things you do when you're in college. Well, yeah, maybe we still do. I don't know. Yeah, um, they do. <laughs> <laughs> and so I remember that. But then the other memory that came back to me, and, and I don't know if it's accurate, but I remember going to, I thought it was Colgate, one of those schools, and we had to play on a gym floor. It was, they had put up a net mm -hmm. on just a, a gym floor. It was horrible. I mean, it was impossible to play on. And, <laughs> and the way I played tennis, I mean, so Kim, my, I was not a doubles player. I mean, I was just like, put me in the back court and I'll get the ball back. But I, right. you know, so on a court where the ball is skidding and doing all these funky things, it was, I think that's why it was in my memory. I'm like, this isn't fair. <laughs> I can't play on this. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, right. Um, how about you, Michelle? Well, first was always the uh, friendly Sundays in all the small towns in Pennsylvania, New York State. <laughs> um, after class, one one memory I have I still think of is going on a spring break trip down to it was toward, to, to Virginia, but we stopped at Annapolis uh, because at the time I believe Navy didn't they just barely had women and they were kind of had a club. And so we were kind of, Rose said she, we were doing it just to be nice, you know, to play them because mm -hmm. they really didn't have much experience. Anyway, so we round around through the campus and found the courts and then had to find the Colonel or whoever, some big <laughs> military guy, but it was raining. And uh, so Rose gets out of the van, goes, talks to him and he, insisted that we should play tennis in the rain you know that we should be tough and play tennis <laughs> wow. and Rose did and he was trying to shame her into it and she wouldn't have wouldn't have anything to she's like no these are my athletes I'm not going to hurt them <laughs> you know and she stood up to him and we got back in the van and left <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I still remember how she uh she had a backbone. <laughs> um, that's great. That's great. Hey, Ella, it seems like some things don't change. It's the van rides, the hotel they room don't. stays, the I places know. to eat. Yeah. Where did they play indoors? Same place? Uh, for which team? At Navy? Um, no, like uh, the van. Where would they drive to the, like the van? Oh, Match. yeah, for you guys. We would, if we walk to practice play indoors, we would play in the field house. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they were no it's like other indoor facility. No. Mm. Nope. Mm -hmm. yeah. Off that day, if the field house was busy. <laughs> it, was, it was a big deal when the field house was built or, or when those courts were, I mean, I, were they there when, was that there when we were freshmen, Cindy? Oh, maybe well, not. Maybe that I was feel like that was kind of a new thing when they put those courts in inside. But again, they were they're tricky to play on. Yeah. 78, 79. Yeah, it was built in 78, 79. Okay, so it was brand. Yeah, it was yeah. brand new. Okay. So it was well, a big deal. We had practice on them today and we're very appreciative of them. <laughs> <laughs> nothing right yeah it's true it's funny because I, I don't know if it was you Kayla because we host two tournaments in the fall and one year I don't know if it was raining or if it got too dark we had to move matches into the field house and I think it was you Kayla that played someone she was like down 06 05 and they moved the match indoors into the field house and, came, and the, the opponent Kayla's opponent was complaining like I can't believe we have to play on these courts the balls like move so fast and Kayla Kayla won the match yeah. <laughs> and she was so frustrated <laughs> it was the best day of my life <laughs> I was like yes finally but like my practice on these courts are really you know doing me good now <laughs> I never thought yeah. I would play a match on them. <laughs> uh, Kayla, do you have um, your next question to ask them? 
I do. So what advice do you have about networking and finding the right job after Bucknell? Um, Wendy, Miss Wendy, I'll start with you first. I mean, I wish I had some really sound advice. You know, I've had the same job since I graduated Bucknell. I've taught in the same school system for 35 years. So I haven't had to do a whole lot of networking. I'm probably the worst person to ask advice to <laughs> um, on this front. But I do believe that, um, you know, may, once again, like just being real when you're like interviewing for a job, this is who I am, don't no pretenses, because you just want to be like, you, you want to be hired for who you are. And, you know, it is amazing, as Michelle made reference to the networking and the people you know, through people often will open a door for you. And so there's no shame in no I mean, making the most of the contacts that you have. <clears throat> And I know how much Bucknell, you know, really tries for their seniors at the career center and, you know, the career fairs that they have. It's, it's a really great experience. Mm, what about you, sure. um, Cindy? I would say that your first job, like I, I think it sounds like Wendy did it, found a dream job right away. In my case, I was an economics major. I really didn't know what I wanted to do, but I took a job at a credit union and I, I learned what I liked to do and what I was good at. So, and then they moved me into like this computer data processing thing then, which just opened up a whole world to me. So that's what I've been doing for 30 some years is working with software companies and and so I felt like just getting in the door of a place and not expecting to find your dream job in the very beginning. So not putting as much pressure on yourself to find, all right, this has to be the perfect thing. But I think you learn about yourself as you work in a job and what, what you want to do. I agree. Thank you so much for that. Miss Patty. <clears throat> Yeah, I um, I didn't use a lot of networking from Bucknell, but I, I do know that, I mean, I was a teacher right out of college, and I do know that I kept in touch with my advisor so that when I, you know, he was very gracious when I went to graduate school to um, help me figure that out later on. So, I mean, I, I'd say keep your doors open. Um, and then I would just say the influence that Bucknell had on me, I did a lot of coaching too, Wendy. So that's really interesting. Uh, many, many years. In fact, just until last year, I finally resigned from coaching. Um, but just remember that you have all these various skill sets and you don't know how they're gonna be put together. So just be open in the idea that um, it may not make, make a huge difference uh, like Cindy was saying, the first job you get, but you're just going to be, you know, all these skills and all these lessons that you've learned in the past are all going to kind of come together and make you who you are in years to come. So I wish I had done more networking. I don't really have great advice for that, except for um, I do know from my daughter's experience that if you're a good networker, you that really does make a difference. Um, so you kind of have to be bold about it. Thank you so much for sharing. And Miss Lori. Um, well, I, yeah, I guess my experience, I, you know, I was fortunate the, re the recruiting uh, for the accounting field anyways, came right to campus and all. So I was able to get my job, you know, right from interviewing on, on campus. Um, my, my kids on the other hand, um, definitely, you know, Using who you know. I mean, never be afraid or ashamed of, of that uh, because it, it, it does help. Um, so as, as other people mentioned too, definitely use, use your, your connections um, and don't be afraid to, to, to make a change. Um, you know, I think ultimately, you know, the, the first job might not be, as someone else said, your, your dream job. Um, but remind yourself that, that you deserve to be happy in what you do. You deserve to love, you, love what you do. 
Um, so, you know, make sure you have to have the, the courage to make a change um, if you're not happy in, in what you're doing. Um, I am, um, and uh, you know, I, I guess I, I was fortunate also to, to find a job that, that was conducive to working part-time. So I've, I've been uh, lucky, I've had several different employers, but uh, all enabled me to, to work three days a week from the time I had my daughter. So, um, you know, I'd say that's not something, you know, d down the road, if you want to strive for that too, because um, it, it definitely helps you achieve a nice uh, work-life balance and it's able to, to get to all my kids sporting events and, you know, so. I know it's especially crazy during these times, COVID, now people are, you know, working from home, working remotely. So, you know, everything's changing now, but thank oh, you yes. so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. um, and Miss Kim, what advice do you have? Well, I think they took all the good advice. So, <laughs> but it's pretty much the same, what everyone else was saying that don't be afraid to change. You know, you make these decisions, you know, but 17 to 20 years old and you pick a major, and you're, you feel like you're stuck with it for the rest of your life, but you're not. So, you know, if your first job doesn't work out, it's not something you enjoy, find what you do enjoy and pursue it. Um, Cause I, I know my nieces were recruited as lacrosse athletes and had to pick their majors when they were 15 years old. So I don't know how you're supposed to, you know, um, really decide what you want to do at that young of an age. So yeah, just keep your options open and, you know, pursue what you love. And if the first one's not it, just look for something else. Thank you. What majors did they choose, by the way? Did they choose? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one was business major. She's now working for Johnson & Johnson. And the other one uh, went on to physician's, uh, physician's assistant school and is now a PA down in Raleigh. Nice. So yeah. one played at Villanova and one played at High Point University. Very cool. My sister played lacrosse in college as well. She played at oh. Worth Mary. Oh, okay. Well, they, yeah, they probably played against each other because my young, my youngest niece just was out two years ago. So. Oh, funny. Yeah. She's 24. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, she graduated. Age, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Thank you for sharing. Sure. And lastly, Miss Michelle. I, I thought about your question, having read, read it and I'll try to make this quick. I had two, two things that I thought about. Um, one is, well, when I was your age, I was very shy and not not in networking and was, I don't know, skeptical or scared of it. Um, but looking back as somebody that hires people, uh, it is very important, so we have a small business that we often hire people who people we know, know and like and can vouch for them it, because it's hiring. If, if you look at it, when I was your age, I didn't look at it from the hiring person's perspective but looking at it from their perspective, it's a big decision and it's a lot safer decision if you have a recommendation from somebody you know. And uh, you're gonna come with great credentials from, uh, you're obviously smart being at Bucknell and being an athlete, you've got all the great sportsmanship and all the things we talked about about being an athlete, but having somebody know you and can recommend you is great. So just using the people, networking can have a, kind of a slick turn to it or something, <laughs> but it's who you know and, um, and are friends with and who has, knows you and they can talk about you. It makes a huge difference from the perspective of the hiring. And the second thing I really thought, it'd be interesting to see what other people think. Um, I've, I've played with a lot of older women now too. And we've looked back and like Rose's generation really blazed a lot of trails for us to be able to do it. I can't believe it, <laughs> to be able to, to uh, have careers and have families. And uh, like I'm an engineer and an MBA and um, they blazed a lot and they did a lot of work. And then we also, when we went into, we were still on the early edge <laughs> of women in, in corporations and stuff. Um, but one thing we were told in Rose's generation was really pushing, you can have it all. And uh, you can have it all. What I found and a lot of my friends have found, you can have it all, but not at the same time. And so think about that as you think about your career. And as far as like a family is extraordinarily important. And I didn't have my children until I was, until 35, till older. And um, 
and just had children because that was the thing to do at the time. I mean, I didn't have a driving force, but uh, to do it, but it, um, they're extraordinarily, they will be, uh, if you have your family, you don't have to ha have children, but your family is by far the most important thing you will ever have. And, <laughs> and having time, the time you spend with them is the most important time you will spend, not in your careers or whatever. I'm not, I'm, no, right. I'm a Harvard MBA. I have a lot of people are major on Wall Street and all that kind of stuff. But if they're not spending time with their family, that's what they regret. And so anyway, so you can have your being like playing tennis and doing well in academics. You can do you can juggle a lot of things, but uh, be very thoughtful about what you do and when you do it as you go through your life. So <laughs> that's a lot to put on you. <laughs> No, thank you so much. That was that was great. Thank you. Well, I think you brought Kale and I both to tears. So I'm sure <laughs> when um, the next time I see Kayla, um, I'm sure we'll be talking about all that wonderful life. So thank you. Um, my last question. Um, these are two decades now that have had Coach Rose. And from what I've learned, she sounds like an absolutely amazing coach, mentor, and an especially important um, person. So as Kayla's coach and for the players that I will coach in the future, I really want their time spent here at Bucknell to be some of the best four years um, of their life. What advice can you give me to help make that goal come true, both for me and for my players? Um, Patty, I'll start with you first, since I know, as you said, you've been a coach for numerous years. I was really affected by Coach Rose, and I think um, the thing that I would say I learned from her is that she really knew her players. I mean, you think about, I think about what she did for Cindy. I saw that happening. Um, and it was, it was amazing. I mean, here's a student who really was, I mean, you were struggling, you know, and she was keeping tabs and helping out and trying to figure out how to, I mean, she, whatever, she was very, very concerned. And it was, um, it was beautiful to watch. And, and likewise with me, I mean, she just, she pushed me just, just enough on the tennis court and I really did need it. Um, somehow she found that that sweet spot and it's what I've always learned in coaching is every student every player mm -hmm. is different and so they're going to be coached differently mm -hmm. so you can't she never just lumped everyone in the same bag and expected everyone to act the same way to me it just seemed like she really had a knack for understanding her players and trying to coach them individually to go to that next level and not to be someone they couldn't be, um, but just to take them to the next level. Okay. So I, yeah, she was, she was a great coach and she <laughs> bend my knees a lot. She was always on me about bending my knees. So. Yes, that's very important. To use yeah, I still, I still don't. So <laughs> that's wonderful. Thank you. Wendy, how about you? I know you're a coach too. Well, I think the key to being a good coach is ha ha having your players believe in themselves when they maybe don't, right? That you're like their unconditional belief system behind the scenes, letting them know that, you know, you, be you believe in what they can accomplish maybe when, th when they doubt themselves. Um, I remember this one time specifically that Coach Rose called me over to the, to the bench. She's like, Wendy, come here. I'm like, <laughs> and I went over and she was like, listen to me. You were playing like a scared chicken. <laughs> I want you to go out there and beat this girl because you can do it, but a chicken can't. So go out there and hit that ball. And I was like, Okay, coach. Okay. Okay. And, like it was an unusual pep talk, but like it did get the result that like, I mean, who thinks to say things like that? But she would always kind of find the words. And I was like, you know what? I'm not a chicken. I can do it. Right. 
No, I have to say, in all the time I've coached, I've never called someone a scared chicken. I, I have to say that that, that, that was unique. But, um, but it, you know what? I don't think, Kim, did she ever call you a scared chicken? No, she she was very hard on you. She was definitely harder on you than anybody else, I thought. Like, why yeah. do you think that? So we can, like, psychoanalyze it, but she was. Because really you're, you're so sweet. She's just <laughs> trying to toughen you up, I guess. And I you know always want to want all the time anyway. Oh, God. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put that in the back of my head and maybe pull that out when it needs to be. <laughs> I mean, like, I, mean I cannot up. believe all these years later that I remember her saying that to me, but I yeah. do. It was like a very vivid memory. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and do you remember the outcome of that match? I have two. I have one other story about coach too. I don't know if you remember this, but like there was this stomach bug going around campus and I was, I caught the stomach bug and like it was terrible. And I called down to coach. I'd like, coach, coach, I caught the stomach bug. And she was like, if you're not down here, you're off the team. And it was like, coach, was I, so hard I'm like, me. I just threw up through my nose. I've never done that before. <laughs> but like, I'm like, I'm really sick. She's like, you, you have to come down. And I'm like, all right. So I'm like, I can't, I'm like, all right. So I threw my like like my little wraparound skirt on down we went because we had a match right and I showed up and she was like you know what you look pretty sick you only have to play doubles today and I'm like oh okay and I think I was playing with Kim I'm like Kim I don't know like you couldn't see like I couldn't like really move because I have this time look. but we won that match I mean, yep Oh, how she knew that I could like we could win but like somehow she must have this sixth sense of what we could accomplish and believe in us when we didn't believe in ourselves right and that is the bow at the end of the story right like I wrapped it all up like she was like <laughs> oh that's great that's hilarious too <laughs> oh, great. yeah how about you um please I think and I actually coached, I coached basketball for 10 years. Okay. And um, I think one of the real important things is to keep your sense of humor. And I, Coach uh, Rose would always say, whenever anyone was get flustered or whatever, she said, no, don't get your undies in a bundle. And as soon as she would say that, we'd all burst out laughing and it would pretty much accomplish what she wanted to do, which was relax us, you know? So okay. you know, there's just little things that you know when to say, even though it may sound totally silly, it will work to relax your team and to get them more focused on what they need to do rather than being scared to death or whatever. <laughs> all right, that one is a good one for me. The sense of humor. I got to work on that one. <laughs> Thank you. Michelle, do you have any advice for me? Know how to mute and unmute on Zoom. Um, <laughs> uh, well, the, what I would always instill, what you probably do, is to be a gracious winner and a gracious loser. Yeah. That keeps you going. It's kind <clears> of what having a sense of humor as well uh, will help you all through life. And it's extraordinarily important. And I think as athletes, we tend to, to learn that. I mean, I've, you see some, some kids that aren't being taught that nowadays, yeah. but that's extremely <clears> important. <throat> mm -hmm. And uh, it, like I said, it'll last your life. And I had one other and now I've forgotten. Oh, just that also instill the perspective, um, well, the love of tennis and that hopefully this is just the beginning for tennis for you. I mean, I'm still hoping to play 20 or 30 more years. <laughs> we, have, we have a club where every morning there's three courts of 90 somethings playing. I mean, they, they add up to over 300 in, in, um, <laughs> in age on one court. And wow. uh, they will be happy if they die on the courts. And uh, <laughs> uh, Yes, tennis is wonderful. It's definitely a sport for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I love it, yeah. Cindy? <laughs> Do you have any advice for me, please? Yeah, um, I think what everybody said was great. Um, one thing we did that Coach did that I still remember as being a favorite was near the end of, or at the end of practice, I don't know if it was every day or a couple times a week, we would do what she called fun doubles. Yeah. Which was 15, 
20 minutes, everybody would play doubles and it was just relaxed and supposed to be fun and not cutthroat. Mm -hmm. And I, I still remember that. Yeah. Hmm. We'll do that like on a fun Friday, fun Friday doubles. That sounds yeah, good. Go. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. The problem is fun doubles wasn't a lot of fun for me because I really wasn't a doubles player. <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> well, you can stay back and just hit ground strokes the entire time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Lori, I don't know if you heard the question. Yes, well, yeah, I kind of okay. get the gist of it. Yes, sorry, my yes. computer died, so I'm on my phone. Um, um, I guess I, I would, you know, having fun is important. I agree with that also. But I'd say I, on the flip side, and, and I guess this is a, a perspective I've gained just from watching my kids growing up. None of they are not tennis players, but uh, they've mm -hmm. played a lot of other other team sports and all. And I'd say d don't be afraid to be hard on 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 the athletes and, and work okay. them hard and and expect a lot of them because I think that athletes perform the best when they're when they're prepared. I think that brings confidence and all. And I, I think that my my kids, the best coaches that they've had are, are the ones that that uh, you know are conditioning them hard and, and are really you know working on the the technique and all and and not giving them days off and and all and and uh, just you know really pushing them. And I think that that brings out the best in the athletes and it ultimately is is the best thing for the athletes to succeed. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. It was absolutely wonderful. Um, I have two sons and um, no daughters, but I always say that the, the girls on the tennis team um, are my daughter. So I have 10 daughters. So I'm going to do the best that I can to make you all proud of what they do both on and off the court. So thank you very much for spending this time with Kayla and I. It was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies, and I'll wrap it up with just a few comments. And my first uh, comments are going to be directed to Kayla. Kayla, thanks again for taking the time here on campus to be with us tonight. I hope you got a lot of great advice, and I hope you encourage your teammates to watch this, actually, when it does air on the website. Um, and we wish you the best of luck. I know in this crazy pandemic, every day is a different obstacle, especially in college athletics right now. So uh, we, we keep our fingers crossed for you that you'll have a spring season and that you'll be on those courts behind me uh, winning a lot of matches for the Bison. So good luck. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And ladies, wow, what an awesome group. I knew this was going to be good. <laughs> decade of the 80s is my decade because I graduated in 1988 with you guys. So I knew this was going to be a good one. And I, I kind of had the feeling too, Coach, this is another group that if we had just uh, – thrown more questions out, we'd still yeah. be talking for another hour because uh, Definitely. it's clearly evident how much you guys enjoyed your time at Bucknell and you enjoyed the experience. I want to thank you for what you did while you were a student athletes here, how you represented the school and, and the athletic department, and more importantly, how you represent Bucknell now as alums. Um, I say it all the time to donors and people I meet, Bucknell student athletes would not have what they have today without the support of our alumni. And it's, it's always the way it's been at Bucknell. It's always the way it will be. Academics comes first at this institution. And then what our athletes get is because the alums that have come before them help and support the program. So thank you all for that as well. And then for those of you that tuned in at home to watch tonight, thank you for doing so. And go Bison. <laughs>